What is it that prevents people from doing the things they already want to do in life? The most basic answer, I'm sorry, it's so simple, but it's true, it's fear. People making this complex process, this woman was telling me that, I don't understand why they don't do this, why I feel this way. I said, it's called fear. Everybody's afraid we're not enough. Everybody's afraid we're not rich enough, smart enough, young enough, quick enough, fast enough. It's human nature. But the secret is to do it anyway. I know that sounds so simplistic. My work when I'm working with somebody is showing how to condition themselves, like building a muscle, so that you take action first, automatically. Because if you don't do that, it's hard. You lose momentum. It's like, how do I get started? Where do I go? Do anything <laughs> to start the process of moving forward rather than let fear stop you. All of you have targets, things that you're after. If you're gonna get a new result, if you're gonna grow your business, if you're gonna be able to support your mom, if you're gonna get rid of the anxiety, if you're gonna be able to overachieve and not have all that fear inside of you, you obviously need to get a new result. You're gonna have to get new action. You don't get new results with old actions doing the same thing. Exactly. What human beings can do is amazing. What they will do is usually disappointing. It's not because we're not capable of it. It's because we don't have new actions because we get in certain emotional states that dominate us, like anxiety, like fear of failure, right? Like the fear of the loss of your mother as an example. So if you're in a state of fear, you're gonna behave very differently and get very different results. And then if you were in a place of being courageous or bold or warm or connected or playful, any of those. So the most important key to changing your life in any situation is to change results, you gotta change behavior, but to change behavior, you gotta change the emotional state you're in. How do you do that when you don't feel like it or it feels overwhelming? There are two ways, and I've done this with the greatest athletes in the world, I've done this with four different presidents in the United States, I've done it with billionaire clients. All you have to do to change your state is not try to think your way there, like I'm happy, I'm happy, I'm happy, and do a bunch of affirmations, your brain's gonna go BS, you are not happy, right? <laughs> what you need to do is make a radical change in the way you use what we call your physiology. It's a big word, it just means the way you use your physical body. I've taught this for 40 something years, 40 years, and about three years ago, Harvard finally did a study where they proved what I did worked, and they called it these power positions. And what they showed was, if you stand, everyone can try this, stand up just for a moment if you want, everybody at home can try it as well. So do something really silly. Put both your hands on your hips like Wonder Woman or Superman or that stuff, right? If you stand like this and you breathe deep for just two minutes, what the science found was that you will absolutely increase your testosterone by 20%, man or woman. You'll drop your cortisol, which as you know, is the stress hormone by 22%, and you're 33% more likely to take action if you wouldn't have before, because fear would have stopped you. Now, I don't have people just stand like this. I have people move, use their voice, make radical changes in their body. You'll feel it after two minutes. Or, you know, somebody who's, you know, puts their arms back like this and their feet up, that'll produce the same state. It produces more certainty in you, and that certainty gets you to take different actions. So if you are in a situation, you think of the worst scenario, your mom dying, no. no, my business goes under, I never achieve at the level I need to, all the things I have anxiety about, the minute you focus on them, you go into those states of fear and then you behave fearful and you get lousy results. And when you get lousy results, what does it do to your brain? You go, see, I told you I couldn't do this. It becomes this <laughs> negative loop. So how do we break out of it? We change our focus by asking better questions. Ask this, answer this question in your mind. What is it in your life that you're proud of? If there's something you could feel really proud of right now by focusing on it, your children, yourself, something you accomplished, you did, how many can think of something you could feel proud of? And I don't mean fake pride, ego pride, like where you're making things up. I mean, well, you really did something you're proud of. Good, right now, close your eyes and focus on how it feels when you're really proud. Focus on that moment you're proud of. How do you breathe when you feel really proud? And if you're a little kid, what happens to your face when you're really proud? You don't hide it, right? There's that big smile on your face. Think of something that you could be really grateful for or excited, pick either one. Something you could be grateful for, a person, a moment, or something if you wanted to that you could be excited about. Let's use excited for a moment. How many can think of something in your life that if you focused on it, you could feel excited? All right, close your eyes. And just for a moment, all we're doing is changing your focus. Focus on what could excite you. Feel like it's really happening. Your mom's healing, you break through in the business, you're achieving the level you want. Anxiety is ridden from my life. I'm on charge, I'm on top of it. How do you breathe 
when you feel really excited. Yeah. So if we change the state you're in, just by changing our focus or the way we use our bodies, it's gotta be a radical change, right? Here's my question for all of you. If you focus on what you want, life has probabilities, there's no guarantees, but you increase them when you change your state. And that's really what this is all about. Learning to change your body and learning to change your focus. Somebody is really stressed out. They're not stressed out for no reason. It's because they're focusing on something that makes them feel stressed. They often, when they're focusing on it, it changes the body. You start to feel tight. You start to feel a certain way. And then they use language like, I don't know what to do. Why am I so overwhelmed? So if we change what we focus on, if we change the way we use our body, if we change our language patterns, we'll instantly feel different things. How do people use their body when they're worried versus when they're excited? Yeah. If you learn to use your body first, use your focus first, you can literally change how you feel in moments and then you develop new habits where you start to feel good all the time and it isn't some phony fake pump up. It's literally the way you've conditioned your body. Just like being fit as an athlete, you wanna be emotionally fit. When you're not sure what you're gonna do, you're gonna hesitate. And hesitation kills momentum. And momentum is what makes a, a sports team win. It's what makes an athlete, a business person win. When you get momentum, it's like it takes enormous energy to get a rocket out of our, you know, our gravitational pull of the earth. But out of the solar system's easy. Once it has momentum, it takes less fuel, less energy. Starting a relationship, starting a business, changing your body, it takes so much in the beginning. But once you get going, it's actually really easy. We all have a need for certainty. We have a need to know that we can avoid pain, that we can be comfortable. Some people do that when they're stressed by smoking. Some people work out hard to deal with it. Some people eat to try to get that comfort back. If you were certain every moment of your life, you knew what people are gonna do, when they're gonna do it, how they're gonna do it, you'd be bored out of your mind. So we also need uncertainty. If you have too much uncertainty, you freak out. If you have too little, you feel bored out of your mind. And you can get uncertainty or variety by a great conversation, by making love, by taking on a new job or a new career, a new opportunity. You get a million ways. The question is, do you meet your needs in ways that are positive or negative? Because sugar will make you feel good in the moment, but you feel good long term. Smoking a cigarette will make you comfortable and certain You see this in, in great actors or, or great uh, entertainers. They'll come to me and in the beginning, they work so hard to be significant, to be unique, to be special, to be important. What they really wanted was love. But now people stop on the street and they'll say to me, they don't even know who I am. They just want my time, they just want this, they want a picture. They, they don't respect my family, they don't respect it. You'll hear them so upset. What they wanted was the love. We, we can have both. But the more significant I am, the more unique I am, the more separate I am from you. The more connected I am, then some people go, yeah, but where am I? Where am I special? So the finding that balance between the two is what makes people feel alive. And we can meet all these needs in positive ways or negative ways. You can get significance by tearing other people down. Oh, they don't, they're lucky, they, they don't care, they took advantage of somebody, you don't know anything about them. You see people do that with famous people all the time. Why are they tearing them down? Because if I don't feel good about myself, if I can make you smaller, I look like I'm moving up. But you're not, and it doesn't work. But if you do things where you significantly love someone, if you care for someone, you're the most significant person in life. If you try to prove you're significant, then you have kind of the Trump effect. Even people that like him will say, you know, sometimes he can push people aside because he's telling everybody how special he is. That gets in the way of relationship. If we're gonna connect, we gotta not make ourselves significant. We gotta find out what's significant in the other person and honor it. First four needs are the needs of the personality. We all find a way to be certain, even if we have to lie to ourselves or just work hard. We all find variety. We all find significance, even if it's tearing other people down. We all find at least connection, if not love. But the spiritual needs are to grow. When people say, what does it take to be happy? I say one word, progress. If you're not there yet, but you are starting to make some progress in your body, or progress on your relationship, or progress on your career, your finances, you're gonna feel good. And when you achieve it, how long do you feel good for? Not very long, because when you achieve it, you stop growing, you kind of celebrate, nothing wrong with that. But how long after you get that thing you wanted are you happy? A week, a month, a year, ne almost never a year. It's a short time, and the reason is we're not supposed to just sit there at the table of success and celebrate for years. We need to grow to feel alive. And everything in the universe grows or it dies. But when we grow, we have something to give. And when we give, that people often say human beings are selfish. I've been selfish, I'm sure you've been at times, but that's not my core and it's not anybody's. And I'll prove it to you. When you're having, all of you at home and all of you here, when you have something great in your life that happens, you learn something, you experience something beautiful, what's the first thing you want to do? Tell people. Share something with yeah. you love. Why? Because when you share with it, it expands. See, pleasure is something coming in from the outside. Happiness is something inside you that you share.
And if you, happiness is what people really want. Pleasure, you can get pleasure from alcohol or, or anything, but some people, it's all about me. When you're taking what's inside yourself because you've grown and you're giving to someone you love, your children, a friend, a girlfriend, boyfriend, a coworker, anybody, there's an aliveness you can't feel by yourself. There's only so much pleasure you can feel. Happiness and joy comes when that expansion is shared. If you want a breakthrough, not just a little change, you know, you can change laterally. You know, you can go from being pissed off to frustrated. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> doesn't help you much, right? But if you really want to change, most people are trying to change. Say you want to lose weight and they want to make money. They go, how do I do it? They look for the strategy. But I'd like you to think of three S's. Strategy is where most people go first. Like, how do I do it? But how hard is it really truly to be fit and have energy? It's not that complex. It's not like reserved for the 1% or expensive to learn. You have to interrupt, you have to hide from the answers to those things. <laughs> the real problem is the second S, story. They have a story that says, it's a set of beliefs they tell themselves over and again, I've tried everything. Or if they're single, all the good ones are gone. You know, <laughs> you know whatever the story is. And if you tell yourself a story over and over again, so we convince ourselves. You always come up with a lousy story when you're in a lousy state. And so the number one thing I show people to do is how to change their emotional state. When you're feeling tired or frustrated, when you learn how to change your body so that you really feel excited and isn't fake, when you learn how to change your biochemistry, which is what I teach people to do, when you're upset with someone, do you ever notice how you can now remember everything that they've ever done that ever upset you, right? Yes. But when you're in love, what's wrong with life? What's Nothing. wrong with anything? When you're in love, oh, we have no money. Who cares? We're in love, right? <laughs> so your emotional state controls the story you have about your life, and then your story determines whether you find a strategy, or even if you know the strategy, whether you really do it or not. When people say, I tried, what they're really telling me is I have a story that says I should try this, but it's really not gonna work. So I give it a half-reared attempt and it didn't work, and now I can tell people I tried. What you really gotta do is learn to change your emotion, your state, change your story, and then you can find the strategy, or you can make the strategy to work. I'm, I constantly believe you gotta feed your mind. And, and challenge your body, because the mind-body works together, you know? What stops people, as we said, is fear. Well, fear is physical. You feel it in your throat, your gut. But if you do something really physically strong on a regular basis, you develop a new emotional habit. And that emotional habit will get you to follow through and do things differently that people won't do. It's really not that complex. There are a few habits in your life that truly could change your whole life. I start every single day with this process called priming, training my brain to be in a peak state. So what I do every day is I prime myself for what I want rather than letting the environment control me. We've all had times where you snapped at somebody and you felt bad because it wasn't them, it was the state you're in, right? Well, there's no excuse for that. If you prime yourself, you set yourself up. But the way I did it is I do this process. It's 10 minutes, I put some music on, I do this massive change in my breathing so it radically changes the way I feel. And then I do this three-step process. First, I do three minutes of gratitude where I think of three things I'm really grateful for and I associate, I don't think of it over there, I feel it. And the reason is, when you're grateful, you can't be worried. You can't be fearful. When you're grateful, you can't be angry. And anger and fear are what screw people up most in their relationships, in their life, in their business. So I wire myself. I was saying to you that most people want to be happy, but their habit is to be worried or pissed off or frustrated or stressed. And so they're, they've got a highway to stress and they got a dirt road to happiness. So I wire myself. I've got a highway to gratitude, which changes all your emotions. And then I do three minute process of kind of a prayer for my family and friends. And then I do a three minute process of the top three things I want to accomplish. I see it as done and I feel it. I'm done in 10 minutes. So sometimes I go 20, but my deal is 10. So there's no excuse not to do it.